Okay, so this is an overview of creating a chart in Excel on the Mac. Now, if you want to use it for Windows, if you're watching this on YouTube, just below this there's a link to the Windows version. And if you're on my website, jargonfreehelp.com, you'll see this on the Excel page, how to create charts in Windows. So what I have here is some data. I've got some sales figures over here. I've got quarters across the top and I've got some sales people here and just very quickly want to show you how to create a chart. There are other tutorials, look out for them, links below the video and on the website. So on more detailed formatting and things like that. So if I want to create a chart, all I have to do is highlight the data I want. In this case, it's all the data. But if I just wanted, say, this data here and say quarter three, what I would do is highlight the first block then I would hold down the command key on the Mac and highlight the second block like that. So I could then keep the command key, I could press it down again and get quarter four. So that's how you can get data that's actually not next to each other. I could have done it going across this way as well, again holding the command key and going across like that. But let's do it with all the data here, I'm just going to highlight it. If I go into insert and choose charts, it's going to take me to the chart tab over here. Now it was on home before, I could have simply just clicked on charts like that and that would have taken me to the same sort of place where I can choose which chart I would like. And you can see there's a number of them here. This is the insert chart block and you can see you've got column charts, line, pie, bar, area, scatter and other. By clicking on one of them you will get a list here showing you all sorts of different ones. So you've got 2D ones, 3D ones, cylindrical column charts, and so on. Line charts, you can have them with um, data points in here, and so on. You can have a 3D line, stack line, there's a whole load of them. I'll show you in a moment how you can change from one to the other once you've chosen one. So again, pie charts, selecting all the data like this wouldn't really be appropriate for a pie chart. You just really want one series. Bar charts go horizontally as opposed to column charts that are vertical. There are others, scatter charts, area charts, and under other you've got a whole load of others, donut charts, bubble charts. Thing about charts, you need to go away and sort of try them all out. Let's create a 3D clustered column chart. So I'm just going to click on column there. I'm just going to click on that. And there you go, it just puts it right here in the middle. You can see I can move it around. When I've got this four-way arrow, I can put it wherever I like and I can resize it by going to one of the corners when it becomes a double-headed arrow, it changes. Or the same again on the sides here. Beauty about the charts is if I change any data, so if I was to change this one here, that's Gary, quarter four, which corresponds to this column here. Let me change that to 200 and you'll see immediately it changes there. So the nice thing about charts is they're dynamic and they do change uh, as you want them. So I've chosen this 3D column chart, but actually I want to change it to another type of chart. You'll notice up here it's just got this charts tab, but if I click actually on the charts, you'll see I've now got kind of, I think of them as sub tabs, chart layout and format here. And rather than if I click outside of it saying insert chart, if I click back anywhere on that chart, you'll see it now says change chart type. So what if I wanted to change that to a line chart? Well, there you go. It's done exactly that and it's still got my legend here. Go back to column, I can change it now to a 2D clustered column. Choice is yours really. Let's go back to the 3D clustered column. For this one, I quite like that. And let's just have a look at something. A lot of people have this chart and they actually want to put it on a separate sheet called a chart sheet. Now to do that, you can either right click. If you haven't got right click set up on your Mac, you can just hold down control and click and you can choose move charts. Now I could put it onto another sheet. If I had another sheet, I could just choose it, but I haven't got any others. Or I can put it on a new sheet and I can give it a name. So I'm going to leave it as Let's call it sales chart and that's what it will do. It will give it a name and if I click on OK, you'll see it has moved it. You can see down the bottom here, it's actually got these tabs here and it now has a sales chart and a, a sheet one. And again, if I was to change any of the data, it would change correspondingly on here. So 
I may not want it here. If I want to move it back, well, one, I could right click again, or I could go into charts, move charts, and I can choose to move it back into sheet one or whatever sheet I've got. So let's click OK. It's moved it back here. Sets it back to the default size. Let's just make it a bit bigger because it's just a bit easier to work with. So just some key things that you might want to do. You might want to change the data that you've got selected. Once the chart is selected, you can go to select and you could now choose a different range just by highlighting that range. And you can see that as I highlight it, it has collapsed the dialog box down. When I let go, it brings it back. It's now only got Gary and Marvin's data here. I'm just going to reselect it because I want all of them there. And if I wanted to, I could remove one just by clicking on Marvin and clicking on remove. So that's a really quick look at what it can do there. The other thing is you might want to switch the plot around. So at the moment, I've got the values on the side here and I've got the quarters here and each bar is represented by this color code here in the legend. If I want to change it so that I've got the names down the bottom and showing me their quarters, I simply click on that switch plot, which I did just there. So I can easily just switch it back. So it's plotting the series by row. Clicking here is doing it. Sorry, that's by row and that's by column. So I'm now plotting them by row going across like that. You can quickly change the layouts here. As you can see, I've got no titles or anything, but if I go to the quick chart layouts, you'll see that there are a number of options here. I can click on this one, which has now put a chart title in. There's various others. I can click on this arrow on the side, or I can click on the arrow down the bottom and it will show me others. I'm gonna stick with the one that I've got and I can change the chart title. Click on it, click on it again and Whoops, I moved it, which I didn't want to do. Click on it again and highlight it more about moving in a second and I can just type in sales. I could just highlight it, right click and change the font. Just like any other program, you can now change the font style, the dialog box will pop up so I can change the font, whether it's bold, italic and so on. Clicking off of it, click on it again. I can click and drag it to move it around. I can put it anywhere I like. I can put it down the bottom if I like. Now, if I want to add in uh, a title, I can do that by going into the chart layout tab at the top here. Now, if that title wasn't already there, I could just go to chart title and tell it title above chart and it would put one in. So if I was to delete that, and I'm just going to press backspace to do it, I can just put a chart in by going title above chart. And again, I've got to put in the title all over again. But this does allow me to put in uh, an ax a horizontal axis title and a vertical axis title as well. So I can just go here and you'll get the idea. Just choose one, put it down the bottom. So I can put in here quarters for 2014. There we go. So you can easily do that. Again, things like the legend on the side here, you can move that around. And you can also just by pressing backspace, delete it. So you can add in the legend if you do get rid of it just by popping it in again it, by clicking that it's put it there. Let me just delete it. You'll see very quickly legend at the left. It's put it there. I can change it to legend at the right. That's the most common one or one that I like using. Data labels. These are the labels that can appear at the top of columns or lines. So I can show the value. And you see it's popped up showing me the value of each of those. I can also have series name if I like, and I've also got the category name. If I go to data label options, and you'll see at any one of those drop downs, there are further options. I could then go to my labels on the side here in that category, and I can switch on all of them. Gets a bit messy, but that's up to you. Depends on the chart. I don't want any data labels. I'm going to get rid of that. You can have a data table, which is useful if you don't have too much, down underneath. So if I choose that, it's now put in, you can see it's put in your data labels. Um, sorry, data table down at the bottom. I'm just going to choose no data table. So I'm sorry, this is a very quick rundown of how to make changes and things like that. So I'm just going to click on axis here. You can see you can have axis going left to right with no labels. So no labels. 
therefore that gets rid of the quarters down the bottom, possibly not very helpful. Um, you can have it going reverse order and so on. Grid lines, I've got horizontal grid lines, I've got major grid lines, you can have minor grid lines which are smaller units and you could also have major and minor and again there's more options if you go and explore in there too. You can have the vertical grid lines, I could have major grid lines, you can see they're slightly heavier. Okay, so there are certain things that you can do. Um, with the 3D one, you can actually rotate it as well just by clicking it and doing that. So there you go, that's changing the tilt effectively and the rotation around the center. So there are a few things. If I go into format, you can see you've got all sorts of styling. You've got a fill option. If I was to click on one of these bars, I could change the color by going into fill and choosing a new color and you'll see it's just done it there. It's changed all of them. You click on it again and you can choose a different color. I'm not saying this is gonna look good, but just that one bar you might want to stand out. The line is the line that goes around the outside of it, so you can change that as well. So you can see it's now put a line around the outside. Various other effects such as shadows and so on, and you can change the transparency as well. So you can see that it's now kind of partly see-through. Okay, so loads of different options there. What I do want to show you is um, another way you can actually do the formatting is by going into the current selection at the top here. So I'm on my format tab here. And I might want to change, say, the uh, chart uh, area. If I choose that, you can now click on this button that says Format Selection here. And I'm going to change the fill color to, this is really not gonna look great, but there you go. I could do it just by clicking on it. It gets selected and I right click and choose Format Chart Area. This applies, this right clicking to anything. If I click on grid lines, you can see the little circles I've got them there. I can then choose to format the axis. I can format the grid lines. I've got the 3D rotation here as well. So I could actually change it here. I've got my little arrows for moving them up and down. I could change it to a value as well for rotating it. One quick one that I do want to show you is actually what you can do with um, pie chart. So just very quickly, just bear with me. I know it's a bit of a long, but very quick, very rushed sort of tutorial. But if I just go to charts, and I'm just going to change it to a pie chart, I'm just going to have it as a 3D pie chart. And you'll see it's plotted some data here. One of the things about pie charts, when you select them, you can see it's got circles at various points around it. But you can actually click on a pie piece and now just circles here so it's just selected and you can click and drag to explode a piece out which sometimes people want to do to highlight something and if you had more pieces you could drag them as well away this was not a very good color scheme here i could actually just right click and um, choose format data point let's just get a different color going for that one because this is not looking um, particularly useful Let's just go with that for the moment. Why did I choose that? That wasn't very good. But anyway, you get the idea. I can click and drag. To put them all back, just click and drag them like this. The exploding thing works as well on 2D pies. So uh, once again, just make sure you've got just the one selected. If you have all of them selected, they all explode out. I only had the one there. So there you have it. That's a very quick rundown on how to use charts in Excel.